Hi everyone, I'm Claire from the Kitchy Kitchen and today I am going to show you how to make not one, but two apple pies. Yes, it is apple pie time, it's that time of year. I love apple pie, especially with ice cream, but basically anything that is a conveyance for ice cream I am all about. And I'm going to show you two of my favorite types of apple pie. One is actually based off of a recipe I came across in a vintage cookbook. I collect vintage cookbooks, I love them. And so this one's based off of an old shaker recipe. So it uses rose water, which I thought was really unusual and cool, so I'll more about that later. And then I'm also doing a classic American apple pie, so cinnamon, clove, a little bit of apple cider or vinegar, so lots of those classic flavors. And then I'm gonna show you two different types of pie crust. One's gonna be a double crust with a braided sort of ridge, which I think is gonna be very pretty. And then the other one is a classic lattice pie crust. This is basically what I have out here. I have my pipe dough, which I've made. I showed you how to make pie dough in a 10 second living episode, so make sure to check that out. You can use any pie dough recipe that you like. So I have enough for a double crust, so I have basically two sets of dough here, plus deck flour. So so I can roll that all out. So firstly, the filling for my two pie crusts are these. So for the American, I have about like four to five cups worth of thinly sliced apples. I have a half cup of white sugar, half cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of flour, and this is to thicken the apples. I have a little under a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. It just kind of adds a really nice zip to everything. I have about a teaspoon of cinnamon and then a half teaspoon of cloves. I'm gonna do a big fat pinch of salt and then a couple teaspoons of cream just to kind of give it a lot of really nice richness. And then there's the shaker apple pie recipe. So for this, I have my apples, half a cup of sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I have about a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then, this is sort of the star, I have three quarters of a teaspoon of rose water. So to make apple pie, you have to use the right apples. So today I am using a Honeycrisp. And at least to me, the key to using a good apple for an apple pie is if you bite into it and it's sweet, it's juicy, oh my gosh, don't use it in an apple pie. <laughs> Just don't. Because you need something that kind of makes your mouth do this. Like it has to be a little bit tart, has to have a little bit of tannic structure to it. And the reason is because it needs to have that balance of acid. Because when you bake it, if it's just all sugar and it doesn't have a lot of good fiber and texture, it's gonna fall apart, be mushy, and it's not gonna really do much for you. So you want something that's a little bit fibrous and has a little bit of a tart characteristic to it because then it'll hold up in baking and it'll taste amazing. So honey crisps, crispins, and pink lady apples, I think are the best apples for apple pie making. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how to do this because it's fun. But in order to properly peel an apple, what I do is you hold the apple in your weak hand, so in my case, my left hand, and I'm just gonna be twisting it like so. And I basically twist it through my vegetable peeler. And this is how you're able to do that really fun, super long peel. Okay, let's see if I can go all the way. I'm actually kind of curious about this. And then I'm gonna slice this up. So basically, I wedge the apple, cut out the cores, and then I just slice it, basically about, like I'd say, maybe 3 eighths, between like 1 eighth and 3 eighths thick, somewhere around there. So you can see it's nice and thin, not too thick, but also not like exceedingly thin. So now I'm gonna get started with my mixes. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cover them with their respective ingredients. And now I'm gonna do the same over here. So I just want everything to be really nice and evenly coated. And the nice thing about using apples like a Honeycrisp is because they have a really good texture, they're gonna be juicy, but they're not gonna to be too juicy. And that's really the key here, is you don't want something that's gonna create apple pie soup, you know? You want it to be gooey and delicious. And apples have a lot of natural pectin, and pectin, for instance, like if you're making jams or jellies, sometimes you'll add pectin to get it to firm up, and apples actually are a natural source of that. So that's why you're able to get like that really awesome texture in like a really well-made apple pie. All right, so now it's onto the fun part, which is the crust. So I'm very excited about this. These are still very cold, they're right out of the fridge. And so this is what a double crust looks like. It means I have two crusts, essentially. So this is the top layer and the bottom layer. 
And I'm doing smaller pies, I'm doing eight inch pies. So if you wanna use a nine inch pie pan or a 10 inch pie pan, that's totally fine. It just means that you might need a, you know, an extra cup of apples, a little more of the ingredients, something like that. So just know to scale up or scale down. All right, I have my deck flour, which is very important because if you do not flour, you will have a sticky, sticky mess. And I like to do this. I like to kind of rub it around so it gets a nice coating of flour. Okay, very good. All right, and then I'm using my roller. And because it's still kind of stiff, because it was in the fridge, I kind of jiggle it back and forth like so. And I keep pivoting it so that it's all even and it never gets stuck. There we go. And I keep doing this until I get it to the right thickness, which is probably about an eighth of an inch thick. So to put this on a pie pan, here's a trick. Um, this isn't sticking and it's for pretty small pie pans, so it wouldn't be too much of an issue. But if you were nervous about it and want it to land perfectly, you roll it up on the rolling pin like so. And this only works if you've used plenty of flour. You put the pie pan underneath, you lift this guy up, and you just roll it across like that. Bloop. Perfect. And here's the other thing about pie dough. It's not pizza dough. You do not want to stretch this out because it'll tear really easily and that's not fun. So be very gentle with it. Always give it plenty of slack. And so I'm going in right now and I'm pressing it into the pie pan just to make sure it's there. Perfect. So next, I'm going to cut around, leaving about a half inch. A half inch is important because this is how you're gonna seal the whole thing up. So if you don't have kitchen scissors, do not fret. You can definitely use a knife to do this, but this is where kitchen scissors really come in handy. I mean, look how easy this is. I can treat it like cloth. Beautiful. Okay. okay. So this looks great. Now I'm going to fill it up. So I'm gonna do my American version of apple pie in here. So I'm just gonna fill this with all the apples. And this is what you want. You want it to pile on top really nicely because they actually will cook down quite a bit. So if it's not domed a little bit, you should be adding a few more apples to it. So I'm just gonna set this aside for now. So to make the lattice for a pie crust, I'm basically first going to slice up strips. So for me, I like just creating a little square. It makes it a lot easier to keep track. All right. And because it's gonna go a little longer, I'm gonna do it this way. So you want them to be, I'd say about like three quarters of an inch thick. And you're just gonna slice all the way down. Okay, and now here's where the fun starts. So the pie comes back in. And I'm gonna lay my long ways down first. And then here's the fun part. This is where I'm so bad at math and things like that. So at the first time I did this, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Um, so basically what you do is you go halfway back like so, and you put the lattice down, and then you go down. And then you take the other two and go back and do this one. And then those go down. And then you just flop it. What? A basket weave. I don't know why, it's so silly. I don't know why I should be this impressed with myself, but I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, it just looks like a pie, right? It looks like a legit, real pie. Um, so once again, just to kind of do a quick little demo, it's basically, you're alternating the strips as you go. So I now am going around and I'm going to trim the rest of the lattice, just so it's at the same length as the remaining dough. I don't want there to be too much left over. And because this is so pretty, I'm gonna keep the rest of it really simple. So what I'm doing is I'm just rolling the dough around like so, just to hold it all together. And this by itself is kind of pretty. Like, I mean, I'm not mad at it. Like you could totally do this and just roll the crust, call it a day, boom, pie. No, everyone would be very happy about that. I'm gonna give it a little more effort, cause why not? And I'm going to do a pinch. So now that I've rolled it up, I'm gonna pinch it together like so. So it's gonna create this kind of little cute tuck. 
So next, I'm going to glaze this. So I just have a little bit of cream here. And what the glaze does is it makes it really nice and golden brown. You can also do an egg wash. So that means you crack an egg, add a little bit of water to it, and use that. And it's just to make everything really nice and golden brown. And then I have some crystal sugar. So this is just gonna be beautiful. It kind of caramelizes a little bit and you can really see it. So it reads as bits and pieces of sugar. This is very nice. So this one's ready to go. However, I still have to get my other pie ready. So in the meantime, I'm gonna put it in the fridge because I don't want the dough to get too loose. I want it to keep that shape. So keeping it in the fridge before you bake is really important. Okay, so the pie crust is in. I'm now gonna add my filling. Oh, the rose water it smells so good. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and get the top crust ready to go. All right, the pie crust is rolled out and once again, just rolling it up like so. And then I'm just gonna pop this right on top. So this is like a classic double pie crust. Boom. So the thing here is I'm gonna go around and trim. And to make a really pretty braid, I'm actually going to keep all of this remnant dough. So first, I'm just gonna roll this whole thing together, kinda like I showed you before on the previous one. And this is just to pinch everything and make sure that it's all kind of getting stuck together. There's no gaps. And I want my edges to be a bit flat because I'm putting something on top of it. All right, that's good. So that can go to the side for now. So now I have all this extra dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna mush it together in my hands. You're never supposed to do this with pie dough because it just it ruins the texture a little bit. But since this is just going on the very, very edge and it's meant for decoration, I don't feel so bad about it. And I'm just gonna roll it out into these long ropes and then I'm gonna braid the ropes. So sometimes I have to do this in two pieces, so, cause making one super duper long braid is kind of annoying and time intensive. So the easiest way to do this is to actually roll it out like so, and then take a knife and slice it in half, and then you have your two pieces. So now I just have to make a third piece and I can get going on my braid. So then I braid it like I would braid my hair. So just going over and around, over and around. And the thing is you do want to keep it tight because that gives it the best sort of aesthetic. Okay, my braiding is done. So I'm gonna grab my pie and then I have my cream. So I'm just going to do the cream all around the edge and this is gonna act as my glue so the braid sticks. Cause you would hate, it would be such a shame to basically bake this and then have the braid be a separate entity. All right. I like the way this one turned out better, so I'm gonna do this one first. Ooh, very nice, very fancy. And I don't need all of this, so I'm just gonna kinda trim a little bit and see how much I really need. All right, okay. So I have a little bit of extra dough left. And I'm just going to press this down, use a cookie cutter and this is gonna give me a cute little shape. And this is a really good way of actually hiding not attractive seams on your braid. So I'm just gonna add it to where the braid kind of meets. All right, and just because I really like symmetry, I'm gonna do one more smack in the middle. So same thing. Well, actually this, yeah, I'll just kind of do it a little more liberally. There we go, boom, cute. And then because I now have my star here, I'm gonna use the points of the star as my reference for slicing my vents. And the vents are really important. We didn't need to do vents in the basket weave, the lattice pie, because there's already naturally occurring vents there. But in this pie, it's actually really important to do vents because it allows the steam to get out. So you don't get sort of a soggy pie crust. You get a really nice, crisp pie crust and it allows everything to cook so you don't just have a ton of liquid in there. You basically need all of that, the juices coming out of the apples to evaporate somewhere. Gorgeous, so my pie is done. It looks amazing, I don't know. I mean, I know it's not even baked yet, but I just am so proud. It looks like a thing, it looks pretty. I, I'm always so happy when it's like, oh, presentation, it looks really nice. And it wasn't too difficult, like this didn't take that much extra time. 
So I'm gonna now bake this and my lattice pie at 375 for about an hour, basically between 50 and 60 minutes. I want there to be some juices, some bubbling happening. I want this to be completely golden brown. And that's when I know my pie's done. You basically wanna see some of that liquid coming out and bubbling over. Otherwise, if there's really no liquid and it's just sort of a tepid golden brown, what happens is it usually just means it's a little bit undercooked. So it'll still taste really good, but the apples might be a little bit crunchy. It might be a little bit too juicy. All right, off to the oven. My pie is done, it is out of the oven, and it has rested for a while. All right, so I'm gonna cut myself a big, fat slice. Mm -mm -mm. So, two very different pies, two very different attitudes, but both absolutely delicious and wonderful. Cannot wait to dig in, but you can see here too, the same thing. The apple has really held its shape well. It hasn't given off way too much liquid and it just looks really, really delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna dig in. It's time for a taste test. So first up is the shaker apple pie. So this is the recipe I did that has a little bit of rose water in it. Mm, that is lovely. I just absolutely adore that combination of flavor. All right, so now it's time for the other one. Mm. What I love here too is that the apples are tender but not mushy. So in the very center of each slice, there's still a little bit of a bite. So it still feels like you're eating an apple pie. Like you know it's an apple. It doesn't just taste kind of like, I don't know what this filling is. It actually has like a real attitude to it. Oh my goodness, this is so delicious. So happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about what goes into making apple pie. And I hope you try these out yourself. Please let me know how they turn out. Send me photos, I cannot wait to see. For more recipes like this one, check out my blog, thekitchykitchen.com.